These are the counterweight arms, and they need wheels on the end. The sides of this slot are only 3 16 but since they're loaded under compression and hickory is very tough, they'll be okay. The bolts for those wheels were a bit too long, so we had to cut them down with an angle grinder, and I didn't have a, uh, a narrow grinder blade, so we got the full light show here. When you cut off a bolt like that, the best way to do it is to have a nut already on it, which you can back off afterwards, and that'll straighten out the threads. Then you can come in with a file and clean them up. The gusset plate on the arms had a little extra material hanging down, but fortunately it was a perfect situation for a flush trim router to come in and clean it up. We got everything together and gave it a test drive. It was stiff and squeaky. And what's actually happened is that these parts here are racked just a little bit, and that ends up fighting the center part. They all need to be perfectly parallel to work super smooth. The racking issue is due to the cross piece connection between the legs. I pinned it instead of gluing that joint because I want to be able to take it apart and break it down for transport. Unfortunately, despite drilling very close holes around those screws, there's still a bit of play in the system and it gets multiplied when you're at the top and bottom of the legs. Then there's the squeaky wheel issue. Evidently the plywood swelled after we made these wheels because they sure didn't sound like that before. A wheel with grease and a wheel without grease. I want the counterweights to be as easy to make and affordable and adjustable as possible. So we made a box here and we're going to fill it with sand. We've got our new counterweight here and our other two balanced out so that it's the same amount. This is 20 pounds and I really like the way that it's operating now. It's down at the bottom here, very smooth. We, it does get a little bit tight halfway up and even though we've added these uh, reinforcements here that t took care of the racking issue, I think that I just didn't allow enough clearance on these pieces. Ideally there would be an equal 16th gap here and a 16th gap here, but things vary so we're just going to add a little bit more room. We're using these screws as the vertical stops, not because that's the ideal final plan, but because I trimmed this flush with here and didn't give myself a lot of room. The desk surface will actually be two inches up, which is what I would make the final height and then have kind of a wedge piece that can be easily removed. The other issue that's come to light is the location of lifting. We've always been lifting in the back because it's most convenient right now to test the smoothness. But in reality, people are going to lift at the front or very close to the front. And when you do this, what happens, since all the weight is in the back, is that it tends to pull away that lower wheel. So we need another roller on the back side I got out my go-to bearings, which are 22 millimeters and originally designed for skateboards. We're also going to need another small roller in here, because when you lift from this end, even if that end stays still, it wants to tilt in. Lifting at the outermost point was something that I had foreseen, but I had thought it would be counter by having a heavier counterweight, or adjusting it so that the desk would just float up. What you really want is for the counterweight to be just a little bit less than the weight of the desk. And that way you can unlock it in the lower position, lift it up, lock it in again. And when you want to lower it, you do the opposite. And that keeps everything under control. This approach would also reduce the need for a damper, like I'd mentioned before, which I've realized is probably a project in its own right. So it may be better to hold off on that for now in the interest of keeping this one simple and maybe have it as an add-on later. I also have other things that I would like to use a damper for, and that helps make it its own project too. Hopefully we can come up with kind of a universal design. We managed to fix the smoothness issue, not by planing this down, but by realizing that the arms were out of alignment with the legs this way. So we fixed that, and now things are running very smooth. You really just need the touch. 
table's coming along. We've made several improvements and we've started to simulate here the weight of uh, a main area, a main surface with a piece of iron, which you can see is countered. And everything is running very smoothly. The issue that we're having though is providing enough counterweight weight to offset a surface here and the, the, uh, any friction that's in the system. It's the problem with sand is that it's not that dense. Um, this counterweight here weighed about 22 pounds and it wasn't enough to offset what we're going to have here. This one we bumped up to 32 pounds. If it's not mounted in the center here, it starts twisting the arm, which is what it's doing here. And in order to mount it in the center for the inside arm, the arm has to come out from the frame, puts more leverage in the bolt. But we need to have more weight uh, in the counterweights. And I've been casting around. Steel is obviously ideal. It's 7.5, 7.6 times the density of water. That's great. But not everybody has plate steel sitting around. And if even if you did, you know, it can be a little hard to work with. So I tried to find other materials. Concrete is about 150 pounds a cubic foot, two and a half times the density of water. It's still not enough. Sand is in the 120 range. Uh, steel is just kind of a requirement. So I've been trying to think what is the best source of steel we can get that's cheap. And what I settled on actually is nails. Because you can buy nails for about 70 or 80 cents a pound. We bought a 50 pound case here of just regular old three and a quarter inch framing nails. And we did a test on this container here, an old screw container. If we fill this up with just sand, play sand, it comes out to about five and a half pounds. If we add in nails and we kind of straighten them out so they're straight, but without a ton of effort, and then filter sand in over top of that, we maxed out our little scale and ended up at uh, 13, at 13 pounds. So that's more than two and a half, or it's more than double, a little more than double the density. So we're going to be able to use this thinner profile on the counterweight, which solves our width problem there by doing this. Adding weight to the counterweights is not the only option, of course. You can also reduce the weight on this panel that's going to be in the front. My original plan featured a tor full torsion box, but I realize that's going to be much too heavy. So I'm planning now to, or I'm experimenting at least, with using XPS, which is the solid foam, not the EPS, the bubbles, and laminating that between some quarter inch plywood on the top and maybe something even a little thinner on the bottom. Our glue test with the foam has dried overnight, so let's rip it apart and test its strength. With our new nail strategy, the thicker box was no longer necessary, so we went ahead and ripped out just one inch from the very center and biscuited it back together. We actually ran out of nails before we ran out of room. Each one of those boxes has 25 pounds of nails in it. So I put a piece of wood in the end and then filled the balance with sand. That way the nails wouldn't float around in the sand. And if I needed to add more later I could. So I actually have a little room to make these heavier. And it is true that we loaded them from the inside out the way that they hang. So they're also not optimally distributed on the weight. This gives us a few different ways to increase the effectiveness of the counterweight without physically making it larger. Just to verify our numbers, we went ahead and put the lifting part of the desk on the scale. And we got about 30, it's off now, but we got 38.4 pounds, which makes sense because we had two 20 pound counterweights at the beginning and it was just about equal. We originally mounted the 
counterweights to the arms with screws on the side, but I wanted to go to a sleeve system because it keeps it centered and makes it easier to adjust the effectiveness of the counterweight. The counterweights have been improved. We made them denser. Each of these weighs 43 pounds. Each one of those blocks, they're full of nails and sand. This one's been centered up and has a sliding uh, mount now. This piece of iron weighs 22 pounds in addition to the extra weight we have here. So we'll hang that on there and just demonstrate how smooth it is. A lot of the effort that I'm expending is probably just the inertia to get it going. I mean, even at the bottom here, it has a little bit too much counterweight. So I like that because it makes it smooth and easy. You can pull it from the very outermost edge. So up next is a locking mechanism to make it lock either down or up. And we also are going to start working on the, the, uh, the surface so we can use this thing. The sun isn't doing much for our view, but our foam core panel is gluing, and we've got a prodigious amount of weight on top, including everything you've seen before, and the kitty anvil and a few other bits of iron. The table, the desk rather, is over here, and things are, things are looking smooth, so the, uh, the locking mechanism is up next. We're going to be working on that, and hopefully finishing this thing up. See you next week.